Hi, I'm Wendy Perviance and I'm a Functional Medicine Certified Health Coach. And today I wanted to talk to you about how to survive and eat healthy during the holidays. So I know that right now there are a lot of party planning and um, open houses, maybe school programs, family get-togethers. And it's always a challenge to try to figure out how to, one, uh, not gain weight during the holidays, right? Because most people tend to gain weight. Um, and then if you have diets that are a little bit more limiting, like I do myself, um, where we try to eat dairy-free and gluten-free, it can be a little challenging on trying to figure out how to maintain that and be able to enjoy some of the parties that are happening. So even in our family, next week we're going to be having an open house for our neighborhood and friends. And so I like to have a couple go-tos that I either take to places or that I have um, on my own menu. And the two that I'm gonna to showcase today are two that I like to have the ingredients on hand because honestly they're wonderful just even as a snack or as a lunch. Uh, you might be tired of having salads every day or just trying to put a, tired of putting a lot of work into whatever it is that you're going to be making for a snack uh, that's healthy or um, for your lunch. So I wanted to just make two simple ones and the first one that I'm going to be doing is an avocado wrapped um, with salmon. It's super simple. Um, and like I said, I like to have the ingredients on hand um, and I like to take them to parties. Even if it's not a potluck, it's great to be able to have something that you know that you're going to be able to eat that is going to be healthy and um, nutritious that will help you know you enjoy that evening as well. So what I you always want to make sure that you get wild Alaska salmon. Um, and so this one is smoked, and uh, I love this one. It's thin little slices, which is the perfect, they tend to just be kind of the perfect um, size and uh, for this dish. And so you just take an avocado, which I've already cut, and you're going to take thin slices, as thin as you can, and we'll just slice those up. And there's lots of variations that you can do with this um, salmon dish. And I'm going to start with one, and then we will actually, once I get to the second dish, I'll show you how you can actually um, put a spin on this one. Uh, so what we're going to do is to take one of these slices of salmon, and sometimes they're a little thick, so what you want to do is actually just break it or cut it a little bit thinner. Depending upon how you, the, the, the thinness, <laughs> the thickness, I guess you would say, that you would like it to be. So let's take one of our slices of avocado, and then you're going to take your salmon, and you're just going to wrap it around the base of it, just like that. And salmon and, um, Avocados are great forms of fat, so it's it's um, it's great for your hair. It's great for your body. It reduces inflammation. Uh, it's important to make sure that you're getting enough fat in your diet. And I know that we tend to think that low fat diets are, you know, they've kind of been the fad for a long time, and just trying to make sure that you eat low fats and. If you're interested, Dr. Mark Hyman has a wonderful book on um, eat fat. I think it's called Eat Fat, Be Thin, or Get Thin. Um, it's it's a wonderful book on uh, eating healthy fats and actually um, what that does to to our body and and um, losing weight. Actually, so it's important for brain health. It's important for our body to function to have good healthy fats. We're just gonna wrap those up like that. And then one of the things you can do as well is you can actually sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on the top of it. It just gives it a little bit, uh, it obviously has enough little salt on it with the salmon. We'll just sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on it. Now the next appetizer that I'm going to make right now is one that is tuna on avocado slices. So I'm going to start off with a dairy-free 
cheese, and I've highlighted this one before. It's actually one of my favorites. Uh, you can use it for so many different, it, it's very versatile. So I got the ricotta, and I'm going to take, in my mini food processor, I'm gonna take about two tablespoons, and I'll put that right inside. my food processor, and then I'm going to take a couple cloves of garlic and add those inside, and I have some fresh herbs I've already chopped, so I have some dill, um, some thyme. You really can do anything that you really like. I added a little bit of um, garlic salt to it. We'll put a little fresh ground pepper, and then I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil, now this Kite Hill cheese is made out of almond milk. And the thing that I love about it is it really doesn't have any other ingredients in it, is um, almond milk, salt enzymes, and cultures, and it tastes just like real cheese, honestly. So I'm just gonna chop, it'll be loud just for a minute. Okay, mix that up. And you're going to want to just add as much olive oil as you need to give it a creamy mixture and not make it, I mean, you really maybe need one or two tablespoons. You don't need very much. I'll just make sure I have it down. And the garlic is all chopped up. The other thing I want to go ahead and add now as well is a green onion. Give it a little bit more um, flavor. And the thing that's great about a food processor is you don't really have to chop very much of it. You just do kind of a rough chop. I'm using my small mini one, which is great for little um, dishes like this. And with this, you can actually make this as a dip a side dip for vegetables. You can use it as we're going to today as a topping. Um, and I'm gonna show you a, a several different ways to use it today, but it's one that I like to, as I said earlier, have on hand to use. Okay, that's pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of the container. You can see how creamy it is and packed full of really nice, yummy herbs. Okay, so while I have that, before we get started, I'll take my cucumber, and you don't have to. Sometimes you can get decorative and do every couple um, inches. You'll just peel a little bit of the skin. When you, when you slice it, it looks kind of pretty. Sorry, my phone's ringing. <laughs> I kind of forgot to take it off the hook. Okay, so we have our plate here, my nice little Christmas plate, and it's the perfect size, as I said, I mean, just a little bit of an appetizer or a little snack or a lunch. We'll do a couple more slices. Now, a couple ways that you can use this is once you get your slices out on the plate, and they're just, you know, really make it as thin or thick as you want it to be, is you can either just leave it like this with the cucumber and you can dollop a little bit of the, of the herb dip on it. And then I actually have some frozen pomegranate seeds from juicing pomegranates recently. It gives it a little bit of color. Okay, so you can have a little like that. You can also take this with a little dollop again, and put some salmon on it. And then you can also, again, put, for a little added holiday color, a few pomegranate seeds. And then the other way that I wanted to show you is before we move on to the tuna part of it, is that you can actually take a little bit of this mixture and put it on the avocado for a little added flavor. Then you're going to take a little bit more of the salmon 
And it just, again, just gives you a little bit of uh, variety. It's nice to be able to mix and match and have several different options when you're making one dish. Um, so I've showed you several. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dip. And I'm going to move it aside. I'm going to put it in with my tuna. Okay, just like that. And then you can mix it up. And then instead of, we made some with the cranberries, now what I'm going, I, excuse me, with the pomegranate seeds, now I'm going to use some cranberries in it. Again, just nice color. It gives uh, different textures, different flavors. So you have the herbs, then you have the sweetness of the cranberries. Uh, this is a great just alternative even if you want tuna. Um, if you love tuna and you you know don't have mayonnaise, we don't we don't use mayonnaise, and you're you know dairy free. This is a great alternative. So you can make tuna salad. You can have tuna on a sandwich if you do that, or gluten free bread if you wanted to. And then I'm going to take this. Once I've mixed it all up. Now you can add a little bit more salt or a little bit more pepper to it based on your own um, flavors that you like. I might do a couple grinds of salt and a couple of pepper. Okay. And then you're just going to take your cucumber. I didn't choose a very good spoon to use to top it. I should have used one of my smaller ones. But there you go. So there's another variety. So there's three ways to make the same, using the same several ingredients. We have our avocados with salmon. And... Um, and then the other way would be to just use minus the um, tuna in here. You could actually just use it as a dip and have, like I said, have the dip in the middle and then have your vegetables along the side. So it really is delicious. You might want to give it a try. I made this today just in time for lunch. It's so delicious. I was really missing dairy, and so this gives you... It's a great dairy alternative. Use lots of different types of herbs in it. Add a little kick to it if you want to, a little bit more flavor. Um, but these are some tips to help you stay healthy and survive the holidays. Make these part of your family's hors d'oeuvres. If you want more tips, go to www.abundantlivingmommy.com and you will get instant access to downloads of recipes, and I have um, several new cheat sheet guides that will help you, again, stay healthy for the holidays. So wishing you all a merry holiday, happy season. Thank you for joining me.